Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, I've got the wonderful Monsignor, Monsignor, I can never say that word, Alan Cox, who's from the, let me try and get this right, the Affleck, the old Catholic Apostolic Church. Apos, apostolic that's Church. Close, you say it, Alan. <laughs> that, that, that's close enough, Debbie. It's re it really is. Uh, something strange has come up on my screen. Oh. Right. Uh, oh, got it. Yeah. Okay, we're there. <laughs> probably telling me that now. we're recording or something. No, no. It's got. Do you want to stay on, on this recording? And that's at the bottom. I had to press. Got it. So. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, then that's great. Cause I'd we're... like you to stay if that's possible. From the you're, yeah. so you're from the old Catholic Apostolic Church. Church. That's right. Which yeah. I've. I've been very interested in through the last few years, especially since I've been talking a lot with David Parry, our mutual friend. Yeah. I've been researching very much into it, and I I, I like what you, you guys do and they Thank do. Thank you. Um, but I wanted to uh, do a little show about the demonics. Are they walking in the world amongst us? And I wondered if, if we could hear what your view about all this is. Well, <clears throat> well very much so. Um, I mean, since... Since I awakened to all this in 1996, um, my my life has been turned upside down, basically. And uh, I'm, I'm now known everywhere <laughs> in, in lots of ways for the work that I do, clearing demonic energies, uh, healing, psychic surgery, um, helping people, you know, whichever way that I can. Um it's strange that this thing about demonic energies. Um, there, are, there are some people who won't accept that there are. And I don't know whether it's because they just genuinely can't believe there can be such things or that they're frightened. And I can understand both, um, you know. And it isn't something that you can persuade somebody to believe in. Um, all it comes down to is that if you've experienced um, the problems created, then it doesn't matter what anybody says. You just know. Um, and uh, if somebody said to me, like, I don't know, 30 years, 35 years ago, that I'd be doing this kind of work, this kind of life, then I'd have found it very hard to believe. But um, circumstances... Um, I, I've I've written my, my, my autobiography up to 2017, the life of a psychic broadcaster, and uh, it is published out there on Amazon and what have you. And it gives a story about how all this happened, uh, where we used to live, and uh, and my partner. I was at work. She was in the house, at the top of the stairs, and she felt a hand. And there's nobody in the house. Push her down the stairs. And uh, she narrowly missed the uh, uh, phone table. And as far as I can understand, it's about the lunchtime. Um, broke, her, broke her wrist. Oh and I, uh, well, it's the days before mobile phones, really, you know. Um, um, that, that were in their infancy over here, and I hadn't got one. And uh, so I get back out from uh, at work about seven o'clock in the evening. And she's sitting on the bottom step um, with a, 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 a bag of frozen peas nursing her wrist. And uh, obviously I took it to the hospital, etc. cetera. But uh, that, that was the beginning uh, of it. Um, and then uh, it was a, a dear friend of ours who is now, Dave Ashworth. Um, he's uh, a uh, cleared bad uh, energies and what have you. And I saw him on Channel 5, um, and I got in touch with Channel 5. And long story short, he came to our house, did the clearing. We, he invited us up to where he lived, and he opened me up to all this. And, uh, and, away, <laughs> and away I went. And uh, the very first thing that I did, because uh, you're full of it, explaining to everything uh, uh, what's going on, and... Um, a friend of uh, our um, sister-in-law um, said she was, her parents were having a really bad time with a uh, brother. 
So I said, yeah, okay, I'll go, I'll go there and see if I can help. And the very first thing that I did was clear a demon out of the house. <laughs> so that was my introduction to the oh. to to the spiritual word, Debbie. Do you think um, it's always demons, or can it be like uh, ghosts of some kind, or poltergeists, or is that all a mixture of being manipulated by demonic forces? Yeah. Well, yes, I think I feel it is. Um, it, see, the word demon gets thrown around a lot, you know. I prefer to say bad, bad energies mm -hmm. uh, because I can come in all kinds of forms. You can get somebody who was really bad in this life, who's passed over, but they're in limbo. And for whatever reason, they can make people's lives a misery. And then you get the demonic energies. And then you get what you call entities. And they're about the size of your little finger. Uh, nail and they can latch on to you and that can make you feel tired and a bit shall we say not focused properly but tired all the time but then when you go to bed you can't sleep yeah they're like draining your energy but then they uh when they know that they can still do these little tricks like keep you awake at night put thoughts into your head keep you your, your mind awake because i'm a Big believer that the dark force is coming through the mind. That's right. Well, they do. And also, you get the watchers. Um, the watchers, if if you ever wake up in the night and you see little red dots around the room, you know, or just one, right? They're the watchers. They're, they're kind of working out what they can do, you know. Um, to some people, this might sound absolutely crazy, right? I totally understand that. But... This is the kind of thing that happens, you know. Um, <clears throat> what I have found out um, is that Anne always comes with me on the on the clearings, clearing people's homes, etc. And I always thank the guides for helping um, because I can't do it without them, and they can't do it without me. So it's a it's a partnership. But most times on the way back home. Things happen that you can you can tell that the bad energies don't like what you've done. The amount of times I've been nearly forced off the road, um, it's been ridiculous how many times that it happens. Yeah, um, same kind of problems actually. You, you know what that's like. Yeah, they, they spot us out, don't they? They know. Yeah. yeah, they want to try and get back at us. Or as my friend, my partner in doing that kind of work, he always says, "No good deed goes unpunished." Yes. <laughs> he's right, isn't he? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, but, but the strange thing is, it doesn't matter. It, it's almost like you can't stop doing what you're doing because it's something that has to be done. Um. What right have these energies got to spoil or ruin people's lives? Mm -hmm. they've, got, they've got no rights, have they? And uh, and it doesn't matter as long as long as, long as I've I've got the the will, the the energy, then I won't stop. Uh, it's as simple as that. You know, we you this about, just... sorry, sorry, sorry. No, go on. No, go on. I was just going to say about the red dots. Yeah. When you're saying they're the watchers, can they be good or and bad, or can they are they only just one type of being? That, that, they're the bad ones. Oh. But I tell you, but I tell you, you turn the light off, um, you, the, the room's dark. If you get all these lovely little twinkly lights all around, you know, that, those are the guys, those are the angels, those are the good energies. And you'll find there's a lot more of those than there's the red ones. And if there's a lot of of those sparkly, uh, lovely um, spirits uh, around, you won't see you won't see the red ones. They they go, you know. So it isn't all doom and gloom. And it, you see, it's very strange because I live my life dealing with the negative. Yet I'm a very positive person. That, doesn't make a lot of sense, really. Well, we have but, uh, to be doing this kind of work, don't we? Because otherwise, yeah. they will, the, you know, the dark forces will use that against us. 
That's right. That's right. I'm very lucky now to be. I, I used to be in the uh, Antioch Church, and um, unfortunately, Paul de Burton, the leader of the church, passed away uh, on Boxing Day last year, and really the church kind of fell apart. And then David got to know uh, Bishop um, Adrian, and uh, and Adrian invited David and myself to join the church. And I'm I'm, not, I'm very sorry that Paul de Burton died because he was a lovely man, but it, it's strange how things happen because um, Adrian's very um, open. Um, he knows exactly um, what. I do. Um, he, he knows um, David's um, uh, what he what he does, and it's like you're you're welcomed in, and uh, we we have a meeting on. Uh, obviously, like we're talking to each other now, and all the different members, the different uh, bishops, priests, etc. That like we all seem to be in harmony, even though we're all doing different things, and. Uh, I think that can only be good, um, you know, because the news focus on all the awful things that happens, and there are some awful things going on. But deep down, I think most human beings are good people, and there's a, a lot of good things that do go on, but they're not sensationalised like the bad, are they? This is the problem, yes, that we don't get enough reports. At the end of most news they like to do a little, like perhaps a kitty kitten story or something, That's don't right. they? Yeah. Just to That's bring right. everyone back up again. But yeah, there is not enough about what good deeds are going on out there. I have a lot of people that say to me, "It's sort of we're all just doom and gloom," and it's like you have to go and find the goodness in that is going That's on. Important. But then, That's goodness, right. you know, we don't go off showing it off, do we? Or like you right. sensationalizing it or anything. And the dark forces uh, like to be sensationalized. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, going back years ago, um, I was asked if I'd go on a, a ghost hunt for television and up in Scotland, and I refused. You know, perhaps I'd be, perhaps I'd be well off now if I had, had said yes to it. But I, I couldn't see the point in sensationalising something that basically was spoiling people's lives um like like the programs like uh, i don't know the ghost on programs that come on the tv and what have you and they're scrolling around in the dark and i'm uh, scaring themselves to death why if there's any bad energies they're there in the daytime <laughs> just the same and, and if it's my job to get rid of them i'd rather be i'd rather be doing in the daylight than scurrying around in the dark yeah. and uh, yeah i don't want to frighten myself but i'm not frightened of them but it's the fact that it's dark right that all that the dark kind of frightens you you know it so i'd rather do it in the day yeah and i just you... oh sorry go on no i just can't see the point of scurrying around in the dark i just don't understand it well, I wonder if these TV programs, their producers are being whispered into their ear by the dark forces or sensationalising it to give them a bit yes. of glory. But you're, that, no, you're doing it with love, aren't we? And with light and with, right. with the Christ energies as well. Is that what you work with? Or Yes. Oh, yeah. About that? Definitely. I do, I do everything in God's name, in Christ's name. Yes, of course. And, uh, and it's, I'll tell you something that I've found. Since I've um, become a priest, is that uh, if I wear my clergy clothes, you know, because I've got the full garbs, you know, the dog collar and, you know, all the robes and everything. But if I find if I put my bishop shirt on, uh, dog collar, and, and, and have my cross and, and what have you on, it's amazing that it, it feels totally different. Um, it it almost feels like you know that the negative energies really do not like it, you know. So like you can tell that they don't like it. So there is something in in mankind that 
there is a powerful good force there, you know. And I'm not ultra religious. Don't get me wrong. I don't go around um, preaching to people, you know. But I've, I find myself, uh, it gives me a great comfort. Um, I think that is personal, isn't it? It should be yeah. personal. We shouldn't be going around preaching to people. It should be something for you. And if you meet like-minded people, that's all well and good to then, you know, have a little chat about that kind of thing. But people don't right. like to be proselytised to. And I think no, I, I... it's a very unfaithful world out there. There's a lot of people with no faith at all. And also what I've found doing this work it doesn't matter people's religion people's ethnicity you know whether the black, black blue green or yellow it really isn't important and and, uh, and which way they pray to god you know wh whichever church you know be it muslim you know uh, it, it it really doesn't matter what i've found is that Everybody has the same fears and everybody has the same problems. And the kind of work that you do and what I do, basically, it, it goes over the narrative of, oh, I belong to that church, this is my religion. It's, it goes beyond it in a way because it, it proves to me that deep down everybody is just the same. That's right. I feel, I'm I'm with that as well, and we've we've discovered that in our um, travels of doing various things, because we're all God's children, yeah. you know. And then, and whatever religion they are, religion is just part of an institution that they kind of follow. But deep down, it's we're all one, aren't we? It's like the one love united. Uh, uh, all. The part I think gives religion a bad name is that is that unfortunately. There are bad people pretending to be good people. Yep. And they and they can use religion as a cover for the bad things they do. You know, like like uh, you know, the um, child abuse and all this kind of thing that gives religion and churches a bad name. Um yeah. but uh and that is such a, a pity, but but unfortunately that's part of Certainly, human nature isn't it? it? It's always going to be there to a to a degree. Um, and I think it's for the likes of us to make sure that if we have the opportunity to expose what goes on, you know. It, um, I I, re I remember years ago it's happened a few times actually, but uh, Anne and I were down in um, Tunbridge Wells and doing a, a clearing, a spiritual clearing at this house. Could hear, next door, I could hear this, all this shouting and almost like screaming. And the lady says, he's, beat, he's beating his wife and the kids up again, you know. And I said to the police now, he said, to be honest, I'm frightened. So I'm, I'm, I'm frightened of him and I'm frightened to say anything in case he comes after me. Anyway, I remember it was on a Saturday. And uh, on the Monday, I said to Anne, I said, I, I can't leave this. And I didn't say anything to the people who we went to. Those are nice people. And I found up the social services there and told them what I'd heard and, and, and everything. Anyway, about three days later, I get a phone call from the lady who'd been to. She says, did you phone the social services? And I said, yeah, I did. Yeah, why? Well, so the police have come, took him away, and, and uh, uh, the the wife and the three children. They said that that I think they've gone off somewhere else. And I said, "Well, I'm sorry, you know." So now it hasn't come back on me, and I, I wish I, I'd have been able to have done that myself. And it's, it's like I I couldn't allow it to happen, you yeah. know. You can't I walk away from. Yeah, but you, you can't walk away from this. Sorry, sorry, no go. On. I was going to, do you think that maybe he was being driven, you know, the guy, the beater-upper, he was being driven by some kind of demon that's a, or an entity that's attached itself to him? Cause yeah, because he was, he was, yes, because he was a, a, an heavy drinker. And they say the demon drink, don't they? Devil's water. Yeah, that's <laughs> that right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, the doorway, yeah. isn't it? it? It is. I do remember... Um, 
I mean, years ago. Um, this is before uh, Anne and I have been together since 1989. So we're probably going back to about 84, 85. And I was working away from home. And uh, my manager had broken up. Uh, um, Anne and I met each other after we both divorced. And we'd both been cheated on, but that's the story, you know. Anyway, uh, I was working. I was a member. I was working down in Dunstable at the hotel. And uh, to say that I'd had a lot to drink that night, you know, to the point that I missed the next day. It didn't exist, right? <laughs> and when I come round, I thought to myself, Alan, what the hell are you doing to yourself? Yeah, you know, this is stupid. And I just stopped like that. I just, that was it, finished. And uh, Same story, actually. That's exactly what happened to me in the really? early 1990s. <laughs> And I stopped just like that. I'd like to think that maybe because I was so adamant that I didn't want to, that the angels came and helped me to not have that um, the problems I've seen other people have trying to give up alcohol. I never yeah. drank a drop again. Same here. So Same here. I'd like to think we yeah. had help behind that. Yeah. And I was, I was fortunate when I was 14, like most kids, I tried smoking. And I coughed myself and I thought, why am I wasting my pocket money on this? So I never touch them ever again. So, you know, so in that respect, uh, I think I've been very fortunate. Very fortunate. I must be, I am a smoker. I do enjoy a cigarette now and then. I don't smoke too much. But yeah. then I've had people tell me, I've had um, a medium say to me that it's not me that's smoking, that it's one of my relatives smoking through me that has died, who's passed over. And that he's yeah. smoking through me, and then I've heard other people saying that they've realised that. And then when they had um like the clearing or an exorcism or what whatever, not necessarily next, but the that uncle or granddad or whatever that was smoking through these people was released from them. They gave up smoking immediately. Right, I've just I hope you don't mind. I've just been linking into you, Debbie. Right, you're going to stop yeah, smoking no, now. Sorry. You're going to stop smoking now, oh. right? You're going to you're going to let me know, but you're going to stop, right? It, my guys are going to make it so it tastes so revolting. You won't want to put one in your mouth, right? You got to let me know what happens. Well, I'll let you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think about? Because um, you were saying earlier about um, poor Anne being pushed down the stairs, and that was a hand she felt. So yes. that was um, perhaps a person who's passed over but still is walking this earth. They need yes. help being sent back to wherever they're supposed that, to go next. That's right. But I would say Anne and I weren't into it then. So, you know, we'd, it's really, but it's, it's really strange. That happens. And then the programme was on, uh, on Channel 5 about people clearing houses. And literally, that that first episode happened in a few days of it's happening to Anne. It's all looking back on it. It's almost like it. I'm not saying it was meant that Anne fell down the stairs and broke her wrist. No, but it's weird how we watched the program that had just come on Channel Five, and it was about people clearing houses. And then Anne and I talked and thought, well. You know, there's got to be something in this, and I found Channel Five up, and they got the ball rolling type of thing. You know, so you think that, that's, to it, like yeah, this kind of work. Yeah, but I, I'd always remember, you know, but when I was about fourteen, uh, I was in the boys' brigade, and uh, I remember well, we was, we always meet on a Tuesday evening, and. I remember walking back home and it's a clear night and I looked up at it was dark and I looked up and I didn't know anything about the stars or anything then and it was the North Star. But I, I know that now. But I remember looking at it and I thought to myself, I've been watched over. I'm gonna be all right, nothing's gonna to happen to me. It was a really strange experience. Mm. And the one thing that 
that happened was that I always remember this one Sunday. I was in in the back garden, and I don't know what I was doing. I was playing or whatever, you know. And uh, anyway, this man I'd never seen before come out of our back door, and uh, he went, "Hello, Alan." I said, "Hello," and he said, "Do you know what this is?" Uh, and he'd got a pendulum, a, a dowser, and he started going around. I said, "What's that?" And he says. You'll find out one day. Have a nice day. I walked back in the house and I stayed outside. Anyway, after about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, I went in and I said, uh, Mom, who is that man who's in the house? He says, There's been nobody here, Alan. Who, have you ever found out who it was or whether it was Petra's spirit God? Because obviously they're trying to teach you how to use the pendulum, aren't they? They yeah. give you your tools. Yeah. Never, never knew. Never knew at all. Mm -hmm. Never at all. And it's really strange. I used to dread the thought of being 50 years old. It really used to frighten me. It was when I was 50 that the first inklings of what, what I'm doing now started to happen. So it's almost like I knew my life was going to change all those years ago when I was a teenager, uh, but didn't understand why. It, uh, I'd like to be 50 again. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 23 years. I've got 23 uh, years past that. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking good for it. Thank I'm for my 50th, and I was so relieved and pleased. It was the first birthday I celebrated properly for many really? years. Really? It's like, wow, I've done half a century. <laughs> yeah, you're still here to tell the tale. We are going to run out of time soon, so I just wanted to mention, obviously we're both speaking at David Perry's Nephilim Anthropology Conference, which is in Scotland. In It's the last weekend of October. Can you yes. tell us what, what are you speaking on anything particular or are you still deciding? Um I'm I'm going to be talking about um right where the the best way of describing it um the hidden enemy. Excellent. Okay. That's what it's yeah the hidden enemy. So the kind and... of greatest trick the devil ever pulled kind of <laughs> That's right. Excellent. That's right. Really looking forward to that. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think people ought to, you know, uh, look up the uh, Nephilim Anthropology Conference in Scotland and book some tickets, 28th and 9th of October. And I'm, I'll be speaking on the 28th on the Saturday. I'm on you know, the Saturday. When, when, you're on the Saturday as well, are you? I'm on Sunday, I think. On the so Sunday. I think I am. But I, yeah. always, I will put a link at the, in the box down below. So, uh, yeah. People can click on the box, which will take you directly to the site. And just remind us again about your book, Alan. Where can we find it? You can what find it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called The Life of a Psychic Broadcaster. And it, it tells you my life story from when I was a child, um, right the way up, and say, to 2017. And uh, nowadays there'll be a follow-up to it. <laughs> but, you know, so so we'll find out what's happening uh, then. You know, I, I I want to thank you for inviting me on. Uh, oh, my pleasure. I want it's to been keep fully enjoyed. Oh, so go on. Sorry, I said it's been really enjoyable. Thank you. Well, that's great. I, maybe you should just mention your podcasts as well because I listen to them. I think they're great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, um, on Facebook, on on the Crystal Radio Facebook page, you can find the shows. Uh, do one on Sunday with David Perry at 10 o'clock. They're all on podcast. And then I do Understanding Spirit, um, which comes on whenever I've got somebody who wants to come on in at whatever day suits them and me. And then it goes on the podcast. Right? So you'll find them on Crystal Radio. I'm glad you listen to them, Debbie. And, you know. and if you go on my website, I used to be on an American radio station, which sadly isn't any more. But I used to, I used to do four shows a week at, at one time. And one of them, which I really enjoyed, I did on a Friday night, which you can find some excerpts on there from Musical Memories. And I used to play all the songs, pop songs from the 60s, 70s, 80s. 
and uh, I used to really enjoy doing that. So if you go on understandingspirit.com, you can find all out about me. You can find the uh, the shows and uh, uh, and that. And if anybody wants to buy my book, there's a link on there. You can buy it and go to Amazon, whatever. You know, so. Hopefully you'll have your books and I'll have my books at the conference as well. Well, well, come on, what's the name of your book then? Well, my latest one's actually called Exercising Witches, which is a fiction story about an exorcist who can see the little demons on people. Oh, right, okay. I'll send you a copy. Please, yeah, yeah it'd be brilliant. Copy uh, addresses <laughs> once we get off, but this is going to come to an end. So I okay. want to thank you for watching. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Alan, so much for coming on. And hopefully it's we'll do more soon. So thank you, everybody, till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye for now.